Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rahul Gosain. And I'm Rohit Gosain. And we are Oncology Brothers. Today, we would like to welcome Dr. Shipra Gandhi, an assistant professor who's also leading the early phase and breast cancer clinical trial program at the Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center. Dr. Gandhi will walk us through her approach to treating triple negative breast cancer using an algorithm. Let's welcome Dr. Gandhi. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm excited to be on this uh, program. Um, so I can, um, let's go through the treatment algorithm for triple negative breast cancer. Thank uh, you so much, Dr. Gandhi. Um, our focus uh, is going to be using this algorithm so that we can continue to reiterate the current standard of care practice in our community setting. We will focus on discussion our two cases following that, which will be from the community setting. And before we continue on with that, the stage is all yours to discuss the algorithm. Okay. All right, so triple negative breast cancer, there are two main areas that we uh, focus our attention on. So the first one is early stage locally advanced and the other one is advanced metastatic setting. So early stage, if the patient is coming to me and the tumor is less than two centimeters and is node negative on ultrasound and mammogram, the approach we take is surgery. So for a tumor less than one centimeters at the time of surgery, generally there is no benefit of giving chemotherapy in the adjuvant setting and the standard of care is just radiation post-surgery. However, if the tumor is one to two centimeters and the patient got operated, um, then patients can get non-anthracycline containing chemotherapy like docetaxel and cyclophosphamide for four cycles. Alternatively, some of the clinicians prefer treating younger patients with one to two centimeter tumor that you see on imaging with neoadjuvant anthracycline containing treatment. And that's based on some clinical trials that have shown anthracyclines are preferred for triple negative um, breast cancer. They are superior compared to taxane um, containing regimen alone. Um, so following that, uh, they get radiation and then these patients um, undergo surveillance uh, where we may do uh, mammograms yearly and clinic visits every every three months with physical exam. If the tumor is locally advanced, which means it's more than uh, more than or equal to two centimeters or lymph nodes are positive, then based on the data from Keynote 522, um, where patients like this were randomized to get chemotherapy alone or chemotherapy combined with pembrolizumab, uh, that, that clinical trial showed um, superior outcomes of PCR. So there was an improvement in pathological complete response rate from 51 to 65 percent, and um, it was accompanied by an improvement in three-year event-free survival from 76 percent to 84 percent. So based on that, we recommend neoadjuvant AC TC chemo, which is doxorubicin, cyclophosphamide, along with um, paclitaxel carboplatin with pembrolizumab in the neoadjuvant setting. Now, patients get surgery after that. If there is a PCR, then per the new per the keynote 522, what they did is that they continued pembrolizumab for an additional um, nine cycles for these patients to complete one year. However, when that trial was designed, uh, capecitabine or um, PARP inhibitors were not approved in the adjuvant setting um, for residual disease. So in the current um, current era, I would treat those patients who have non-PCR with pembrolizumab and I would combine it with capecitabine for uh, non-germline BRCA mutants, whereas if the patients um, have germline BRCA mutation, I would combine pembrolizumab uh, with a PARP inhibitor, a PARP inhibitor for one year. And then let's walk through the algorithm for managing uh, metastatic patients. So the first thing we do for our metastatic patients is we would want to see what their PDL1 is. We could either test it on the primary tumor uh, that was resected before, or we could test it on a new metastatic site that has shown that um, uh, th those patients have metastasized. And if it's PDL1 positive based on the Keynote 355 trial, where they randomized patients to get chemo alone or chemo combined with pembrolizumab, there was overall survival benefit when pembrolizumab was added. And it is to be noted that this is only for those with CPS more than 10. So this CPS is by 22C3 assay. Um, and um, so that would be our uh, first line recommendation for these patients. Then if these patients have 
if these patients were PDL1 negative, then it would just be chemotherapy alone. Uh, an important thing to test is if these patients have germline BRCA mutation. So based on two clinical trials, the Olympiad and the Embraca trial, the recommendation would be PARP inhibitor because uh, those trials looked at PARP and um, there was superior overall response rate as well as progression-free survival with PARP inhibitors, but no overall survival benefit. That's why for pdl one positive patients, I would do chemo and PEMBRO upfront and probably PARP inhibitors after that if they have germline BRCA mutation. Then I think the area becomes a little gray after that. Um, we would want to see if these patients are HER2 zero or if they're HER2 low. So if they're HER2 zero, that means they are clearly triple negative. I would probably prioritize saxituzumab there for these patients, which is based on the phase three ascent trial, showing um, showing a PFS and OS advantage over treatment of physician choice. And um, now that we have the approval for trastuzumab duraxetan for our HER2 low patients, which are defined as HER2 one or HER2 two plus with I uh, with fish negative, uh, we also have an approval for trastuzumab duraxetan. So that is another option that we can give our patients, though uh, the caveat is there were only 58 patients in the Destiny Breast 04 study. So um, sequencing obviously remains a question, and um, I think we need a little bit more data to see which would be the right sequencing strategy here. Thank you so much, Dr. Gandhi, for that comprehensive review and going through the algorithm itself. Um, just to add, would you consider um, checking the PDL1 status in the locally advanced setting? Yeah, so I would not recommend doing that if you are treating the patient in the locally advanced setting because on the keynote 5 to 2, whether the patients were PDL1 positive or negative, everyone benefited with the addition of pembrolizumab. Um, however, if those patients were to recur and become metastatic, then I think the question is we can go back and test the primary tumor for PDL1 status at that point. And Dr. Gandhi, we clearly know that there is benefit from capecitabine and uh, PARP inhibitors in adjuvant settings. The Kino 52 was an ongoing study where they added the pembrolizumab. How important is that pembrolizumab component in adjuvant settings if you've seen um, PCR? Yeah. So generally, if you see a PCR, there is, uh, you know, they have done some secondary analysis from the trial and there's not much benefit to pembrolizumab for patients who have already attained a PCR. So there's actually a trial that is going to start, which is going to randomize these patients with PCR to pembrolizumab or um, uh, or placebo, which is called the optimized PCR. So this is an unanswered question, but right now the standard of care is to do pembrolizumab for those patients based on um, uh, based on the trial. However, if I think you know, if if you see a patient who's having a lot of side effects with pembrolizumab IRAs, I would not push it for those patients. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. Let's dive into our first case. Uh, this is a 62-year-old postmenopausal female uh, who presented with three-centimeter left-sided breast mass uh, on a mammogram, while prior mammogram two years ago was normal. Ultrasound breast and MRI did confirm similar findings. She had breast biopsy, which was consistent with moderately differentiated invasive ductal carcinoma. ERPR was negative, but uh, IHC 1 plus on HER2. So can't really truly call it triple negative anymore. Uh, genetic testing is currently pending. So um, the patient was started as per Keynote 522 without testing for pdl one status or pembrolizumab, carboplatin, paclitaxel, and currently tolerating the treatment very well, except some mild fatigue, and will be starting AC along with pembrolizumab following that. If this patient presented to you, would you consider the similar regimen or you would go about a different approach itself? I absolutely agree with the treatment the patient is on. Um, the tumor is more than two centimeters. Um, I don't know about the lymph node status, but just based on the size, this patient would qualify for the Keynote 522 regimen. Um, so, you know, I agree with it. I, I understand this patient is HER2 low. 
but based on the current uh, you know the keynote 522 did have such patients and our recommendation changes in the metastatic setting we have an additional uh, approval for these patients but in the neo adjuvant um, setting her to low and her to zero patients are treated the same way at this time and dr gandhi you had brought up that in adjuvant settings based on their um, response you would consider either just pembro or combining it with capecitabine or parp inhibitors is there any safety data uh, looking at these combinations right now so in the adjuvant setting this is a data free zone uh, because all the patients on the study whether they were pcr or non pcr got pembrolizumab we have two different clinical trials so one is the create x um, which uh, resulted in the approval of capecitabine uh, for residual disease and the other one is the olympia um, which resulted in the approval of parp inhibitors for these patients who had germline brca mutation but there is no data combining the two regimen combining the two treatments in the adjuvant setting however we have data from the metastatic setting um, showing that combination of pembrolizumab with capecitabine or with parp inhibitors is safe so extrapolating from that i would say that you know we can do it for our patients um, who present with residual disease in the adjuvant setting so the quintex uh, correct me if i'm wrong was including capecitabine for 6 months while Six. pembrolizumab is to continue on for about a year time so in this setting where you have not achieved pat cr with no germline mutation testing on board, would you consider combining capecitabine with pembrolizumab for the entire year? So I would not do for the entire year. So um, I would only do capecitabine for six to eight cycles and then pembrolizumab per keynote five to two. So I would stick with the duration and the regimen that was used in the individual trials, but I would combine the two together, but not give it for the same duration. I think we can now dive into our next case from the community. Here we have a 59-year-old woman who presented with new onset of abdominal discomfort. She's not had any other uh, medical follow-ups in the past. Her imaging is consistent with metastatic disease with multiple liver lesions and a large right breast mass. On biopsy of her liver lesions, this is consistent with ER negative, PR negative, HER2 IC0, metastatic breast cancer. She did get germline testing and that was negative. Her next gene sequencing in this case was consistent with a TP53 mutation and a PDL score of 20. Could you share your thoughts who needs germline testing and how would you approach this particular patient? Yeah, um, so so this is a triple negative breast cancer in the metastatic setting. So all these patients need germline testing. This patient has a PDL1 CPS score of 20. So since it's above the above 10, I would treat this patient with chemotherapy and pembrolizumab. So on the Keynote 355 trial where they had metastatic TNBC patients, um, they were randomized to get Pembro chemo versus um, chemo alone, and there were three chemo agents that were studied. So it was paclitaxel, napaclitaxel, and gemcitabine carboplatin. And the reason they had gemcitabine carboplatin is because they included early relapsers, those who had relapsed within 12 months. And to be honest, given the negative data for paclitaxel in the impassioned trials, I prefer giving napaclitaxel. So I would give this patient pembrolizumab and napaclitaxel, considering that she is not an early relapser. And then because she is her to, um, she's her to IHC zero, so she will not be eligible for trastuzumab duraxetan because that's only for our her to low patients. Um, she does not have a germline BRCA mutation, so she would not be eligible for PARP inhibitors. So I think the next line I would do if she were to progress on chemo and Pembro would be would be sacituzumab based on the phase three ascent trial for TNBC patients. And in this scenario, if this was indeed IHC one or two, and with the recent approval, you I am assuming would lean towards TDXD. Is that correct? So, uh, okay. So on the TD on the Destiny Breast 04, um, they um, included patients who had received one line of chemotherapy in the metastatic setting, 
and um, so trastuzumab duraxetan got approved in the second line setting but we also have the approval for sasituzumab so the question is do you do trastuzumab duraxetan first or you do sasituzumab first and i don't think we have a very clear answer for that the only thing i can say is sasituzumab is a phase 3 trial and trastuzumab duraxetan is 58 patients on destiny breast of 4 um so based on that um we could go either way so i could treat this patient with sasituzumab first and trastuzumab duraxetan later given the data that i know from destiny breast o1 and other studies that trastuzumab duraxetan can work even in a very heavily pretreated population um however there were um, studies done with dato dxd which is another antibody drug conjugate very similar to trastuzumab duraxetan and that had efficacy even post sasituzumab So no no clear uh, data here about sequencing strategy. Well, thank you so much for your time and going through the algorithm and helping us out with the community uh, with these important cases. We truly appreciate your time and effort. Sure, thank you for having me here, and I truly enjoyed talking to both of you.